What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to link up multiple project files. So I'm going to be showing you how to set up a, a group uh, project file. So if you're doing in a group, working in a group, so you've got a larger project, I'm going to be showing you how to set everything up so everybody gets their own kind of separate project where they can do all of the work and then you as the Revit manager or the project manager can bring everything together and link it up in one final file. But before I get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this uh, three times a week at this point. And if you want to check out some advanced tutorials or if you want to download the uh, project files, the ones that I'm going to be using in this video or uh, some of the previous ones, or if you want to see all of my advanced tutorials, I suggest you check out my Patreon first link in the description. Okay, so let's get started. And uh, here I am at Re in Revit. And if I just move Revit out of the way, as you can see over here, I've got uh, three buildings. So we've got building A through B to C. And here I've got a CAD or an AutoCAD site plan. So usually in these projects, you would start off with having some sort of a surveyor's plan or some, some information about the location. And usually that's in, uh, in an AutoCAD file, so that's what I'm going to be using for uh, this uh, project. So I'm going to start off a new file, a new project file. This is going to be the final file that's going to bring together all of these three uh, buildings. Now, usually you would do that first. So first you would set up the main file and then you would uh, send uh, the templates to all of your friends or co-workers and then they can start building their buildings but in this case in order to save time so I don't have to model every each one during this tutorial I've already created those buildings so we're just going to be moving them around just a little bit so uh, going back to Revit I'm just going to start off this as an architectural template and once we're here uh, I'm just going to zoom out a bit and let's now insert that CAD file so I'm just going to go here to insert and go to import CAD. Now you can either go to import CAD or link CAD. The difference is if you go with link CAD, it's going to allow you to basically make changes to your CAD file. And when you restart Revit, it's going to update those changes here in Revit. And uh, if you go with the import CAD, uh, none of that works. So just the, the CAD file is in Revit and that's it. You can't change it anymore. But the upside is if you send your Revit file, you don't have to send the linked CAD file as well. So for this one, I'm just going to go with import CAD. I don't plan on making any changes. So I'm just going to go here to desktop. Here I have my CAD uh, site plan. And here it's really important to set the units up. So I'm just going to set them in meters because I know this project is in meters. And I'm just going to place it at level one. So I'm just going to hit OK. And here we go. Okay, so this isn't your typical surveyor plan. I, I just created this for the sake of this demonstration, but usually you would have a more complex surveyor plan, probably with some uh, terrain information that you can use to generate your topo surface. But first, uh, let's place this in the middle. So if I go ahead and drag this, as you can see, nothing happens. That's because this is pinned in place. Now you have to unpin it before you do pretty much anything. So I'm just going to unpin it. And now, as you can see, I can move it around. You can also use your arrow keys just to kind of center it around and once it's centered what I prefer doing is usually kind of moving these uh, elevation symbols so you just hover over them or just kind of grab them in a selection and then just move them out and I just do that for each one because uh, when I finish I like to be able to see all of my elevations in a good way okay so here we have it so this is our uh, kind of our main file and here we can create some sort of a topo surface and let's just change the units so I'm just going to type in U N and let's change the units to something like I don't know centimeters okay okay again okay there we go so let's create some simple topo surface for this one and let's go with elevation of zero here and you have to go to site plan in order to actually see that so let's go back to place point. Let's do one at 100 centimeters. So that's one meter here. Oops, let's place it over here. There we go. Let's do one at, I don't know, like two meters here. And let's do one at three meters here. 
and there we go hit the finish and there we go so if we go into 3d yeah we have some sort of a surface going on over here and if you want to create that road let's just do that thing quickly so we have a more interesting site plan so i'm just going to go back into uh, site plan and just make sure to go here to wireframe in order to see the CAD file underneath and now you can just go here into uh, split surface and then uh, just select the surface and then you can use pick lines or just using a basic spline you can create these roads. <laughs> Before finishing uh, this uh, split surface uh, action, you just need to make sure that you're splitting your uh, Tobo surface in exactly two surfaces. So in this case, we have this outer surface and the inner surface for the road, and we're not splitting it in like three or four surfaces. So just make sure that you're doing that before you hit finish. And now if I hit finish, it should, yeah, it should work. And if we go perhaps to realistic, uh, you can set this one up to some the concrete material, so let's see. Well, let's do, I don't know, this. And we can set this up as some grass material. Okay, let's see. There we go. Okay, so we've got grass and we have our concrete and there we go. And one more thing that we need to set up, so we're going to be able to link this up with all of the, the all of those buildings that they have over here. We need to set up the project base point. So that's this thing over here. Let me just go back into wireframe. It's just going to make it a bit easier to see everything. Okay, so we've got uh, this kind of triangular thing in the middle. And if you cannot see it, just make sure you go into visibility graphics. So VG is the shortcut. And here, uh, try to find the site plan. So let's see site, open up the drop menu, and you should have your project base point and your survey point. So those are do, th these two. Uh, if I select the first one, that's the circular one, that's the project base point. And if I tab once, I get the triangular one and that's the survey point. Now you need to uh, make sure you move them both to some representative location. In this case, I'm going to go with the bottom left corner over here. So just select one of those. You need to unclip them. So here you've got this kind of clip. So you unclip it, you go MV for move you make sure you select the middle of the point and then you just move it over here to this corner end point and you clip it back in place. You do the same thing for the surveyor point. So you unclip it, MV for move or you can just alternatively go here on the modify tab and find move and then again select it and move it all the way to the corner over here and just clip it back in place. Okay. So once this is set up, we can use this later on to connect it to all of our other files. So let's set those files up first before we continue. So I'm just going to uh, save this one and let's save it on desktop as final project. Okay, hit enter and there we go. Now I'm just going to leave the site plan here and let's now open up these three files. So let's open up first building A Okay, go into level one or your site plan alternatively. And as you can see, this is building A. Now we need to load in that same uh, CAD file that we have just as a template for working. And you just go again to insert and go to import CAD. There we go, CAD site plan, meters, uh, level one, that's okay, here we go. Now you can select it and maybe place it somewhere over here. Alternatively, what you can do, you can go and into wireframe and then uh, just to move it precisely, go here into move, select this corner over here and then place it on this corner over here and then you can lock it in place. Okay, so once we have that in place, let's just change uh, this uh, surveyor point as well as our project base point to that corner of our uh, of our basically our template CAD file. So again, unclip it, MV for move, select the file, make sure you just select the, the point. Okay, 
uh, zoom out, place it over here at the end point of this line. Okay, I kind of missed a bit. So make sure that you're accurate. There we go. Clip it back in place. Do the same thing for the surveyor point. Select it, unclip it, MV for move, select it and place it in the same place. You just want to zoom in a little bit just to make sure that it's in the right place. And there we go. Once it's in the right place, what you can actually do is you can select this whole uh, uh, the, the, the whole side plan, unclip it or unpin it and delete it. You don't need it. You just need that position of your project base point. Okay, so once we have that, we can save this file and we can exit out of it. So here we go. Just escape out of all of that move this out of the way. Let's go with uh, building B. Now you have to do the same thing for building B, but it's going to be a bit different because we need to kind of rotate it a bit. So let's go into uh, insert again, uh, import CAD. Let's see meters level one. Everything's correct. Okay. So building me should be over here again, go into wireframe just to be, uh, just to see the walls on Bend this, go with MV for move. You can select this corner over here and then you can place it over here. Again, I missed just a little bit. So you have to be accurate. There we go. Now we can select the whole building B. And don't worry if you select the surveyor point and your uh, project base point, they're not going to move or rotate with uh, when you rotate anything because they're still clipped in place. So I'm just going to go here with rotate. Let's see. Okay, let's unselect those. Okay, you have to unselect them. Sorry about that. I did not know that. Let's go into rotate. Place your center of rotation over here in this endpoint. You select this wall line and then you rotate it like that. Once this is in place, you can select this. Uh, you can select your project base point, unclip it, go MV again for move and move it all the way over here to this corner. Again, zoom in to make sure that it's in the right place. Clip it back in place. Same thing with the surveyor point, MV, and let's move it over here as well. Zoom in to make sure, clip it, there we go. We just select this, delete it, and there we go. So we have now, th this is now in the correct position. You hit save and then you can exit out of this. And we just need to do the same thing for building C. So let's do that real quick. So insert, import CAD, this CAD file, select it, unpin it, go into wireframe, MV, select this point, place it here, select the whole house except the surveyor point, go into rotate, place center of rotation. I'm just doing it real quick because uh, it's kind of the same thing as we did in the last step. And then just unclip this MV. And do the same thing for this surveyor point. Now we can just select this and delete it. And there we go. We just hit save and that's it. Go back into our original file. We can go now into 3D just to see what this looks like. And I'm happy with the way this looks. And now it's time to import all of those buildings. So how do we do that? We go here to insert, we go link Revit. Now uh, just notice that we only have link Revit. We don't have import Revit. That's because Revit files can only be linked. So if you link it in, you're always going to be able to make some changes. That's the point of this. So you can have one person working on the site plan, one is working on building A, one is working on building B, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's go link Revit. Go with building A, and now the most important thing that people always miss is positioning. So it's uh, automatically going to go to origin to origin, and this is not something you want to have. You want to open up this drop menu and make sure that it says base point to project base point. Hit open, 
And now, as you can see over here, we've got our building loaded in, but we have a significant problem. It's actually kind of underground, and we don't want that. Well, what's the problem? Well, the problem is because we have this topo surface that's kind of curved, and at this point, it's uh, at like 2 meters, so this house is like 2 meters underground. So how do we fix that? Well, uh, what we need to do is we need to delete this link, or remove it. So it's going to say over here, if you delete it, you're going to remove the whole link. You just go with, OK, remove link. Then I'm going to move Revit out of the way, open up a building A again, and I just need to make a slight adjustment to this uh, surveyor uh, or project base point. You just need to unclip it, and for elevation, just go minus the height you want the building to go up. So I want the building to go up like 170 centimeters, so I'm just going to type in minus 170, hit enter, and clip it back in place. Hit save, and uh, just exit out of that. And now go again, link Revit, go with that building A, again make sure that it says over here auto project base point to project base point, and once that is all set, go open, and there we go, now it is in place. Now for this one over here, it's going to be a bit underground, but that one is a bit taller, so for the building B, I don't have to change the elevation of that surveyor point, so just go link Revit building B, and again make sure it says base point to base point, and here we go. And for building C, I want to bring it up just a little bit, so let's go with, and actually let's measure that. So what you can do is go into level 1, and maybe create a section over here, just like that, a simple section, and then uh, you can kind of calculate the height of this thing. So just go from this line to this line, this is the line of the, the whole topography, as you can see, when I select it, it says topography, and if I select this, it says CAD uh, site plan, so this is at level 1, and this is just the actual height, so you can just measure from here to here, and it's like 1.5 meters, so let's bring it up like 130 or something like that. So uh, let's go and uh, move this out of the way, find building C, open that up, go here to the base point, and unclip it for elevation, minus, and I'm going to type in 1300 because this is in millimeters, so hit enter, and uh, just make sure you clip it back in place. Wait, where is that? Okay, clip it back in place, hit save, exit out of this, and you're back over here, and let's load that one in as well. So go link Revit, find that building C, open that up, and here we go, now it's in the correct place. So there you go, all of these are linked together, and now the only problem that's really annoying, uh, that I always like to remove, and those are these 3D levels that we have over here. Now if you're using a version of Revit earlier than, uh, or, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's like the 20, uh, if you're using 2019, uh, you're going to have these 3D levels, and if you're using any earlier version, you're not going to have it. So, uh, in order to remove that in Revit 2018, or sorry, Revit 2019, you just need to go in VG, Visibility Graphics, go to Annotation Categories, and it should be somewhere over here, just find, let's see, Levels, and you just uncheck them, hit Apply, and now it looks a lot better. And of course, you can go maybe into realistic, and there we go. We've got our buildings, we've got our little road, and we have our project that's all connected. And people can now just, everybody can work on their own building, add some windows, add some doors, and later on, uh, you can just update this. Uh, this final model that brings everything together, and that's how it will work. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this video. If you want to download this project file as well as any of my other project files, check out my Patreon, or if you want to get some advanced Revit courses that are all above one hour long, also that can be found on my Patreon, so first link in the description for that. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.